Hello, my name is Anarita Mayol, Associate Director of the University of Pennsylvania Master of Chemical Sciences program. This is a new professional terminal degree in chemistry launched the fall of 2014. It was created to address both the needs of practicing professionals and recent graduates. The program brings together the rigor of an Ivy League education and the flexibility to accommodate the needs of full-time and part-time students. This rigorous yet flexible program ensures that students are well prepared to advance professionally. The MCS program will prepare students to continue to PhD degrees and help advance the career of working professionals in a compact time frame. Students will be mentored and guided by faculty advisor and the MCS associate director to ensure that the coursework and research experience addresses the needs of their career goals. Both recent graduates or seasoned working professionals with a strong science background are ideal candidates for the program. A bachelor's degree in chemistry is not required. At a minimum, a student must have two semesters of calculus, general chemistry, physics, and organic chemistry. To obtain the degree, student must complete 10 courses or CUs, the equivalent of 30 credit hours, which typically takes two years for a full-time student and four years for a part-time student. The courses include a professional development course, four to six PhD level courses in your concentration of choice, and, and two to four electives, and a capstone research experience. Students that wish to continue to a PhD degree will certainly get advantage of high quality education while proving they can succeed in the PhD environment. Student can choose between the following concentrations, biological, inorganic, physical, organic, materials, and environmental chemistry, or a combination such as bio-organic. The capstone experience is a six to nine months or two to three terms research experience that can be done at a Penn laboratory or at an off-campus location. To ensure that students develop the depth of knowledge, technical and professional skills needed to succeed in their careers, the research project involves a proposal preparation, research activities, written report, oral presentation, and poster of the capstone results. Students have the opportunity of doing research either at a Penn Chemistry Lab, Penn Research Center, or at an off-campus location. We are partnering with local industries and startup companies such as the Bloomberg Institute in Doylestown, Axalta, Merck, GlaxoSmithKline, and the Monell Institute, so that students can complete their capstone at these locations. Stay tuned for testimonials of faculty and students. It's a great opportunity for someone who is uncertain about their absolute career path, someone who's not necessarily focused on doing research but is interested in doing science business. They'll be grounded in all the fundamentals of science, um, but also have the flexibility of, of, of being able to, to explore fields that aren't research driven. Uh, but at the same time, if they wanted to go and do work for a company that did research, they'd still have the background, the skills to do that, the fundamentals to make those kinds of decisions, um, and some research experience that would help, help uh, give them an opportunity to find employment. The, I think the advantage of a professional master's uh, compared to a PhD is uh, less time commitment for one and, and maybe an area of specialization whereas a PhD wouldn't you know it would confers a long-term uh, specialization within an area that might not be necessary for all students and all interests. So the students will be taking courses at the PhD level so these courses will not be specifically made up for the master's program and so that's the advantage of this program they'll be taught by the best researchers in their field uh, and and they'll be taught at the same level of rigor and, and fundamental understanding as as any PhD student in our program would be. But it's also very attractive for professional people who are interested in coming back and getting additional training uh, at a forefront area of research and so depending on uh, time demands and, and availability, the pro program can be completed in a very intensive way with a research component or in a, a longer term way over a period of four years. 
Even though I'm a biochemist, there's still different classes that I could take outside that may be more interesting or may be more pertinent to my future career. Well, I think the MCS program can uh, well prepare me for, uh, you know, as some perspective, for example, um, the courses we, we are taking now is of the uh, PhD level. That means the courses is offered to the highest academic levels. That can, uh, that can help me to have a stronger academic background. And moreover, I mean, um, there are so many uh, seminars in the chemistry department of Penn that are open to all students that can help me to broaden my uh, scientific horizons. Right now I'm taking a bioremediation course and I'm also taking a geochemistry course. I plan on taking an aqueous uh, geochemistry course to help with the geospatial information systems and mapping some of the chemical reactions that would happen um, in nature. The chemistry graduate program at the University of Pennsylvania is ranked 18th by U.S. News and World Report in the last several years. Um, we have a distinguished program, a number of faculty members who are leaders in their field, as well as a number of people who are working on relatively high profile interdisciplinary topics. So comparing uh, Penn Chemistry with my undergraduate and graduate institutions, I would say that um, Penn is, is a unique institution because it's in an urban environment, for one thing. That was very different from my experiences growing up. And so there's something dynamic and exciting about being in a city that I find really attractive and really exciting in terms of the people that come to the department and the research collaborations that can result. So the big attraction for me in coming to Penn in 1990 was the strength of the organic group. Uh, organic chemistry at Penn historically has been uh, very strong, uh, in particular in the area of synthetic organic chemistry. Uh, really now in all areas of organic chemistry, from polymer chemistry to chemical biology, there's great strength in the organic group at Penn. Uh, that makes it a very attractive place to be. The second thing that's really uh, historically been very important at Penn has been the extent of collaboration uh, between the chemistry department and the medical school uh, that I'm actively involved in now, and also the chemistry department and other institutes on campus, the Wistar Institute, the Children's Hospital, and the engineering school and the laboratory for research on the structure of matter. So I applied to the graduate program because I'm very interested in nanochemistry, and the Penn program here has a growing interest and investment in the chemistry program, in the nanochemistry specifically. Um, and so when I saw that when I was applying, I was like, I'd like to be interested in helping out with this growth. Um, there's a lot of energy issues in the world right now that could be solved with nanochemistry. And being part of that push, being part of that cutting edge research is why I ended up applying to Penn. The most important thing about Penn Chemistry is that we do first-rate research, but also prioritize the education of our students. So this is not just a research enterprise. This is not just a place where we're trying to get as many publications as we can and do the best research that we can. We obviously want to do all of those things, but we also care very deeply about the education of the students and really turning uh, the students that we have here into the best chemists that they can possibly be. I mean, a number of our, our young faculty are winning awards uh, all the time. Uh, James Peterson was named a Searle Scholar a couple of years ago. Joe Sabotnik has won a number of uh, awards. I believe he was a Beckman Scholar. And so uh, it's a very active and dynamic uh, department uh, in terms of the awards and recognitions that are being conferred, especially on this younger generation of people. Zara Fakhrai, uh, my physical colleague, was recently named a recipient of, a, of an NSF Career Award. So uh, it's a, every year when these awards are coming out, uh, typically there's one or two Penn faculty that are named uh, uh, in amongst the young investigator types of awards. So the facilities at Penn really are fantastic. What, what, a couple that come to mind to me immediately are the, the nanoscale facilities, the microscopy facilities, as well as the Singh Nanotechnology Building. Uh, this is just a tremendous experimental capability for evaluating structures on the nanoscale. 
Another uh, uh, aspect is the Penn High Throughput Experimentation Center, which is located in the basement of the chemistry building. This is one of only a handful of these types of facilities across the country. And what it allows is that uh, uh, organic chemists and inorganic chemists can develop reactions and develop methodologies in a very rapid way using uh, 96 well plates to interrogate conditions for different reactions and also to discover new types of reactions. So again, the student um, is never the rate determining step. The research is enabled by these very powerful tools to make the process go much, much quicker. The chemistry department has a number of characterization facilities. We have a great research resource in, in NMR laboratories, so that's nuclear magnetic resonance. We probably have more NMR magnets than most facilities of our kind, um, high field, low field. We also have an x-ray crystallographer who is an expert in, in, in sort of analysis of inorganic and as well as organic molecules. Uh, we have a biological chemical resource center, and that's sort of a slightly different model for us where we decided as a department that we wanted to invest in critical instrumentation and analysis that a number of faculty members might want to take advantage of, things like CD, a peptide synthesizer, um, plate readers, things like that, where they shouldn't have to individually buy all of those resources, and, and so that's a, com a, a communal department uh, resource. We have really first-rate people who run each of these facilities, and so what they do is to not only make sure that all of the equipment is working, but they also are invaluable resources in both training students to use the equipment themselves, which is an important part of our training exercise, but then also to help them in interpreting data that they obtain.